Minister, you said that uh, young people who are considering emigrating because of the extortionate housing uh, costs could find the grass is always greener. You said if they go to a, succe a successful, busy city, they'll find the same high rents as here. Uh, but the rents could be lower if they went to a very rural area or a third or fourth tier city. Tanish, do, do you actually know that we have the highest housing costs in the entire EU. In fact, housing costs here are an astonishing 88.5% higher than the EU average. So unless you consider places like Paris and Rome, fourth tier, the reality is you really don't know what you're talking about. Since you made those comments, young people uh, living abroad have reacted with utter astonishment. The Irish Independent today has interviewed five young people living all over the world who were stunned by your remarks. 24-year-old Evan McLaughlin said he, he has doubled his standard of living and halved his living costs by moving to Barcelona. 22-year-old Caitlin Grant is doing a master's in the Netherlands and her rent in, uh, in a house share is €365 Euros a month. Meanwhile, the group chat podcast was inundated with, uh, with, with uh, young people living abroad who were outraged by what you have to say. One contributor living, living in Berlin said the latest uh, housing innovation in Dublin is shed sits. Uh, sheds where the, uh, the rent is more than €1,000 per month. And I could go on. Tonish, do we know from the latest DAF.ie report that the average rent across the country is nearly €1,700 Euros per month and a staggering 2300 in Dublin? Those prices are unaffordable to 90% of workers, and that's a fact. The question is, what are you going to do about it? Because your government has made a lot of promises when it comes to housing, and you've broken almost every single one. House prices are higher than they've ever been. Rents have never been higher. Homelessness has never been higher. And we're dreading the updated homeless, homelessness figures tomorrow, which are likely to show another record increase. Men, women and children growing up increasingly in homelessness. So, Tanishtia, on every metric when it comes to housing, every objective metric, your government is failing, and you're failing miserably. No amount of gaslighting by you or other ministers is going to change that. I don't think it's correct to say what you said about every metric, and I'll just mention too, as you raised metrics, um, we anticipate uh, this year um, somewhere between 20 and 28,000 new homes being built. Um, that doesn't include derelict homes being brought back into use. It doesn't include student accommodation. Uh, so uh, roughly uh, 26, 28,000 uh, new houses and apartments being built in Ireland this year. Um, that's uh, the highest in 10 years. And we need to increase that figure again next year. Um, and also, and this is uh, probably the most encouraging metric, um, although we have a long way to go, uh, is that in the last 12 months alone, uh, 16,000 individuals, young couples, have bought their first home. Uh, and that's the highest in 15 years. And 15 years is a long time. Um, just in the last month, uh, over 2,000 young people, individuals, couples, got mortgage approval. Uh, so those are at least some of the metrics that are at least going in the right direction, uh, although by no means far enough or fast enough, in, in my view. Um, I think the Taoiseach is doing an excellent job. And I think Minister O'Brien is doing an excellent job, too. Um, but I do believe it is the role of the Taoiseach to coordinate government action uh, and to accelerate government act action. And I absolutely want to see Housing for All implemented, and I want it implemented as fast as possible. And part of the role of the Taoiseach, no matter who it is, is to make sure that the whole of government uh, is seized of the housing crisis and prioritises action and solutions, because the Department of Housing and the Minister of Housing can't do it on their own. It requires the Department of Public Expenditure uh, to do the right things. It requires the Department of uh, Finance to do the right things. It requires uh, other departments as well uh, to play the role they need to play, particularly in relation to the provision of infrastructure uh, to service sites. And, and that's the impetus that that, that that is happening and needs to continue. Um, you mentioned high rents. Uh, what are we doing in relation to high rents uh, to help uh, people who are renting? Um, three things. Uh, first of all, we're scaling up cost rental, uh, a new form of housing. Uh, initiated by the last government, but being realised by this government, uh, where the government uh, provides uh, rental properties to people who don't qualify for social housing at a below market rate. Um, something that works very well in a lot of European cities, only getting started here in Ireland, um, but I think is definitely going to be part of our housing mix into the future. Uh, the second is a tax credit for people who are renting. Um, and that's going to be more than people think it's going to be, um, because it's being paid for two years, this year and next year. 
So that's going to be a thousand euros into the pocket of a single renter in a few weeks' time. For a couple renting, two thousand euros. For three people sharing the same house, three thousand among them. So in the vast majority of cases, that'll be the best part of a month's rent uh, back into your pocket, and that's not insignificant. And we've also introduced the rent pressure zones, and I think it is useful to look at the daft analysis in detail. And that shows that for the vast majority of renters, maybe 75% of renters, those who are existing tenants, uh, rents rose by 2.5% last year, not 14% or 10%. <laughs>